In this video, we're going to look at thermoregulation, which is the control of our internal body temperature. So we'll cover why we need to regulate our temperature, which part of our brain controls the process, and the particular mechanisms involved in warming us up and cooling us down. As we've seen in other videos, the term homeostasis refers to the process of maintaining a stable internal environment, so stable conditions within our body, because this allows our cells to function properly. One of the most important things our body has to regulate is our temperature, which has to be kept around 37 degrees Celsius all the time. The main reason for this is that 37 degrees is the perfect temperature for our enzymes to function. If we fall below this temperature, their activity slows down, and above this temperature, they start to denature and can't work at all. In order to achieve this stable temperature, we have something called the thermoregulatory sensor, which is a part of the hypothalamus within our brain and it basically acts as a thermostat for our body. To help it, we also have receptors throughout our body, which are tiny things that detect changes in body temperature, with most of them being found in the skin and our blood vessels. By constantly sending information about our temperature to the thermoregulatory sensor, the brain is able to figure out if we're too hot or too cold overall. And if it decides that we're too hot, then it will send out signals designed to cool us back down. Whereas if it detected that we were too cold, it would bring about changes that warm us back up. To understand how it all works, we need to look at the particular mechanisms that our body uses to warm us up and cool us back down. In order to warm up, we need to conserve the heat that we have and generate more. To conserve our heat, we constrict the blood vessels that lie near the surface of our skin, which is known as vasoconstriction. This means that less blood flows near the surface, and so less heat energy is lost to our surroundings. We also contract erector muscles, which makes our hairs stand on end. The idea here is that we trap a small layer of insulating air, which means that it's harder to lose heat from our skin, and so helps to keep us warm. To generate more body heat, we also shiver, which is where our muscles contract automatically. Muscle contraction by itself doesn't actually directly produce heat, but it does require lots of energy from respiration, and all the chemical reactions that this involves results in a lot of heat energy being released as waste, which ends up warming us up. Meanwhile, to cool us down, we basically do the opposite. So the erector muscles relax, allowing the hairs to fall flat, and the blood vessels expand, or vasodilate, allowing more heat energy to be transferred to the surroundings, because lots of warm blood is passing close to the skin surface. We also produce sweat, which is a mixture of water and salts that we release onto the surface of our skin. As the sweat evaporates, it takes heat energy from our body away with it, because it requires a lot of energy to evaporate water, and so we lose that heat and it leaves us cooler. Anyways, that's everything for today's video, so hope you found it useful. If you did, then do give us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.